In this video, I'll show you how to create a Rails API only application and build a couple of REST APIs. Application will be created and run using Docker and Docker Compose. I'll not be going in detail on how to set up Docker. If you have not used Docker for Rails application, I recommend you take a look at my other video, which is Create Rails Application Using Docker, which explains step-by-step -step process of creating a Rails application using Docker and run as containers. For your reference, I have added the link for that video in the description and a few other links for source code and other references. To start with, I'll need to have the following files created, docker file, docker compose yaml, database yaml, and gem file. And I have those created and bundled as a template, which I use for other applications as well. And it is available on GitHub. And here are the instructions, basically four step process that will get you started with a new Rails application created and run as container. Back to the terminal window, go into my projects directory and uh, clone this template and name that as blog API, which is how I'd like to name this application as. Go into the application directory and uh, delete dot git folder, which is of no use for us. And the directory now has those four key files, docker file, docker compose yaml, gem file, and database yaml. Let's open this up in a code editor and uh, quickly go over these files database yaml which reads db credentials from the environment variables docker compose yaml which defines two services one for the db which is mysql and another one for rails api which is going to be built off of the current directory where the rails application is going to be created both of these uh, services take the configuration as environment variables docker file which defines the image for the API application and it is built from Ruby 2.3.0 and installs the packages that are necessary to build some of the gems for Rails application and sets up default work directory for the application. Gem file basically includes just the Rails gem using which when we create a Rails application which will generate a new gem file and replaces this gem file and that new gem file will have all the gems that are necessary for the Rails application. Now back to the docker file again, notice this defines slash rails app as the work directory for the rails application. Now we can change this to some meaningful name, something like blog app, blog API, or leave it as is. I'll just leave it as rails app, which just works. But in the docker compose yaml, I'll change the host port where the MySQL and rails app services be exposed to the host machine, MySQL at 3308 and rails server at 3002. That is all the change that we needed to make in the template. Back to the terminal, let's go ahead and create the Rails application. Command is docker compose run app rails new in the current directory dash dash force dash dash database is mysql skip bundle and dash dash api. Now the last option dash dash api to indicate that this is an api only application which would mean that we don't need all the assets and all bunch of things that's needed for a regular web application. Now run the command. Now it has created the Rails application directory structure in the current directory on the host. Take a quick look at the gem file, which is now replaced with a standard Rails application gem file. The config slash database YAML needs to be replaced with the one we have from the template. Let's do that. Move the database YAML from current directory to replace the one at config slash database yaml. Next I need to run docker compose build which would build the app but before I do that I want to make a small change in the gem file. Back to the gem file uncomment the line to include jbuilder gem. We need the jbuilder gem for the API JSON view rendering. If you are not familiar with jbuilder gem I encourage you to go through the documentation on github which has a few good examples and it is very well detailed. We're all set now. Let's go ahead and run docker compose build. The installation of gems might take a couple of minutes to a few minutes and it is complete now. Quickly take a look at the services running. We have only db service running. Let's run the application as well. Docker compose up. Rails is running at port 3000 in the container and it is available at 3002 on the host. Go to the browser and go to localhost 3002. We have the Rails application running now. Now that we have the Rails application ready, let's go ahead and create some APIs. I'd like to create a set of APIs to manage blog posts. 
you know, because this is a blog API application. The setup APIs that we're going to create are to create a post, list posts, show post detail, and so on. A standard CRUD. I will use Rails Scaffold Generator, which helps create the model, migration controller, view, and route configuration all in one command. That is Docker Compose Run App Rails Generate Scaffold Post, the blog post. And I need two fields in the model, a title string and a text body. Execute this command. Now it created a standard migration file, model, route configuration, posts, controller, and it created .json.builder view files instead of a standard HTML ERB or Haml. That is because we have JBuilder gem included and it is the default view renderer. A quick look at the controller which looks no different than a standard controller but it has some JSON rendering references. Also the comments for the action methods like index or show has some .json extensions in the URL paths. And by default, the corresponding view files for the actions are .json, .jbuilder instead of .html, ERB, or Haml. Let's take a look at the index.json.jbuilder, which is a one-liner which includes a partial underscore post.json.jbuilder. JBuilder DSL makes it really easy to follow and define the JSON structure. Now we'll need to make a few changes to the view files in a bit. Before we make some changes, let's just run the migration and test the APIs. Run the migration. It created posts table in the MySQL running in the other container. Docker compose up again. Rails is running. Back to the browser. Let's access slash posts dot JSON and it is empty as we don't really have any posts created. Let's create a couple of posts using the APIs using some REST client tool. Make a get request to localhost 3002 slash posts API. Now this will be served by the index action of the posts controller and we have an empty array in the response. Use the post method with the same URL which should be handled by the create action of the posts controller and with a JSON body. Now the body will contain the post title and post body. Let's say the title is post space one and the body is some content for post one. Now that created a new post in the application. Now make another get request to posts JSON again and the response has an array with only one post item which we just created. Now the, the request body on the left hand side of this REST client tool is ignored when we made the get request. Make another post request to create the second post with some title and body. Now make get request again. Now that should return two post entries in the response. Individual post items in the response has all the fields from the model or table and also a URL for the post detail or the show post API. Let's make a get request to that URL and the response has the post details. Try the same for the second one. You had the post details for the second post. Because we used the Rails scaffold generator, it added all the fields in both the post listing and post detail API. And that is because it is using the partial post.json.jbuilder on index as well as show. Normally the listing API should contain the basic information of the individual posts or minimum information with a link or a URL to the post detail API. Now let's do that. Go to index.json.jbuilder, comment of the scaffold generated code which renders the same partial for every item. Now I want this view to render an array of post items where each item will include an ID and title and the URL to the show post API. The syntax would be json.array at the rate posts, no difference still here, to post. Let's add the title field json.title. Now this is the name of the field in the json response. The value is post.title. Copy this line. Let's replicate the same thing for ID. Go back to the REST client and reload the posts API and the response now has a list of posts where each post has an ID and title. Let's add the URL as another field which is basically the URL to the corresponding post detail API. JSON.URL, the name of the field. And the value is the URL. We will use the routes helper to generate the URL. Post underscore URL for post. And the format is JSON, which gets appended in the URL. Go back to the REST client, make a get request to posts.json again. And the response now has a URL for individual posts. Let's refactor further. 
index.json.jbuilder. Instead of explicitly adding individual fields, we can use jbuilder's json.extract method to add the fields with the values from the model without any formatting. Reload the API, nothing changed but the shorter syntax for the index view code. Let's say I want to add the created at field with a different format than what post.created at method would return. In this case, I'll have to add that field explicitly. JSON.created at the name of the field or the key in JSON and the value is the date. So we'll use a helper L, which is a short form for i18.localize. Values are post.created at and the format short. Reload the post API and we have the created at with the short form as opposed to the default lengthy date format. Now this is not how you would format date fields in the APIs, but this will just give an idea of how one can set custom or formatted data in the JSON fields. Let's take a look at the show post API response one more time. Now this has the date fields with the default format. Now if I wanted to change this to a shorter format as well, I would have to remove them from the extract and add them explicitly. Let's do that. Copy paste the one from the index.json jbuilder for created at. The variables are same so I don't need to make any changes. Clone that uh, for updated at. Reload the show post API and the response has the updated date format. Let's quickly take a look at jbuilder documentation. Here's one example that lists comments and for individual comment it adds a nested field called author which contains two nested fields for first name and last name of the author. And there are a few other examples that you might want to dig into or go through in this documentation. We'll not be going into the details of those in this video, maybe in the later ones. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.